going on everyone welcome back to bkny hoops if you're new to the channel i am your host as always rasheed white if you're new to the channel definitely hit the like button subscribe all right let's get into it over here this actually comes from si.com and uh they're basically saying that the brooklyn nets cannot afford to actually let nick Claxton walk or anything like that man they said no under any circumstances they can't afford to actually let him now listen nick claxton you got like I said, to me, you got different players out there. You have regular season players, and then you have actually playoff players. Now, can Nicholas Claxton actually morph into a playoff player where, you know, his weaknesses aren't really truly exposed if the Nets get into the playoffs, and especially if they advance past the first round of the playoffs, the coaching actually gets better. We'll get back to that in a second, though. Let's get into the actual article over here. So Brooklyn... Uh, Selected 31st, uh, Nick Claxton, in the, in the 2019 draft. Oh, it's 2019, 2020. All right, so four years of NBA experience right there. We'll continue reading. So it says, Nick covers up sins for us on the defensive end of the floor. Let's just be honest. Uh, Jacques Vaughn said about Nick Claxton, his ability to overcome and deter shots, be a shot blocker, even in foul trouble. Uh, you see him back there. <clears throat> We're able to mix our defenses because of him. Yeah, I mean, they can actually, you know, do a lot of switching because of him. And it actually makes, you know, a lot of guards actually kind of second guess. You got to look for him when, you know, he's on the floor because he can be on you know, help side. I mean, you you know, you never know. Let's uh, get into a clax attacks over here. kind of shows us a little partial example. I mean, all you Nets fans actually see what clax can actually do, but, you know, is this worth a max contract over here? Let's see. From the field. Nets open up the fourth with Johnson, Vinny Smith, Claxton, Dennis Smith Jr., and Walker inside. Yeah, we definitely need to see more of that. Um, then he actually shows the defensive end over there. So Claxton is the best rim protector on the roster, averaging 2.6 blocks a game. Uh, this is no longer a small sample size as he's been swatting away shots left and right and center over the past four years. He's also improved as a switchable, uh, big against quicker guards. You know, the guard, I mean, yeah, it is a guard driven league. The NBA is right now. You have more dynamic guards than you actually do have like, you know, centers like Joel Embiid, uh, and Giannis is not really a center, but. I mean, he can actually cause Nick Claxton some problems. And you saw it in the Philadelphia game. Uh, <laughs> you know, like Joel Embiid is like a mammoth of a human being right there. And you look at Clax, man. It's just like, whew. But again, that's just, you know, one player right there compared to the Tyrese Halliburton's and the John ja Morant's. And um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. The back in. Butler makes his move. A little step through. Oh, swatted by... All right, all right, so, um, yeah, so it also says, well, actually, now, see, guys will actually really get on get on me. They'll get mad at me and think that I'm actually attacking Nick Claxton, and I'm not. I'm just going over the limitations, and actually, actually SI Sports Illustrated is actually really saying the same thing over here. So, Nick Claxton has continued to evolve on offense. So, yeah, and it says the offensive capabilities is a lob threat and excelling in his role due to his adaptive movement without the ball and impressive leaping ability for catching alley oops this season has formed a potent part partnership between spencer dinwiddie emerging as the primary pick and roll tandem with simmons uh unavailable right there but claxon has expanded his offensive yeah you've seen some improvements i mean you see the field goal of, of, i mean it was like the last game he was like i think Five out of six. The previous game was like seven out of eight. Um, but, you know, like I said, when teams actually, like, like Joel Embiid in that, in, in that Philadelphia game, I mean, he was playing some real defense against Nick Claxton. Nick Claxton tried to put up a hook shot, and, I mean, he clanked it off the side of the backboard right there, which I, which I was saying, like, his offensive game needs to really kind of evolve. So he needs to work on the right-hand jump hook. You know, not just the left hand, because like you know, guys like especially like guys like Giannis and Joel and B can just stay on that left side, and it's really hard for him to actually really get that jump hook off with the left hand. So then you actually have to go with the right jump hook. You know, you go you know fake left like you're gonna go with the left jump hook, and then come back right. 
Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things that Nick Claxton actually really has to work on. Decision making. Um, you know, sometimes there's switches right there where he can get a guard switched on to him. And then you actually have to worry about the help. And can he actually make the right passes out of double teams? Um, yeah, so you're seeing some improvement. Now, the shooting is a big thing for him. Mid-range shot is, because like I said, Joel Embiid is in there. Joel Embiid can actually really defend. You know, so Nick Claxton is not going to really be able to actually draw fouls against like Joel Embiid. He's actually a really, really good defender. Uh, let's see, let's see what else it actually says over here. With this evolution, the Nets should be confident that Nick can contribute their long-term future. Only 24, 24 year, 20, I'm sorry, 24 years. I'm bugging out over here. It's late. It should be a no-brainer for a general manager, Sean Marks, and the rest of the front office to hand them the contract extension as soon as possible. All right, so the head, the head scratcher, and you see I'm scratching my head over here, is like, how much do you actually pay this guy? You know, and the thing is, do you pay him all star money, like a Jared Allen? I think he got like a hundred million dollars. Now, is Nick? Will Nick Claxton ever, ever, ever actually make an all star team? You know, this is what I'm actually saying over here. It's the same thing with Cam Johnson. I mean, Cam Johnson got a hundred million dollars, and I was saying I made a video about I be I believe four or five months ago. I'm like, you really want to kind of give him that much money for a guy who's not going to really make an all star team? Um, it's the same thing with Nick Claxton over here. Is he worth a hundred million dollars? <coughs> um, again, this is so, and I don't want to see him traded. I want to see the Brook, the Brooklyn Nets actually really sign him, but for how much? And, and I think the cap goes up in a couple of years. Maybe they can actually give him the money that he's actually looking for. But I mean, the free throw shooting is a problem. Um, that normally these players, that you see in the NBA, it's like 27 years old, 28 years old. I think we should actually see more of a larger sample size from Nick Claxton. I think like his scoring will actually improve um, if he's actually really truly working on his game. You know, what we see from a lot of players is that once the bag is actually given to them, you know, a la Ben Simmons. You know, Ben Simmons got the 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 bag right there, one hundred and seventy eight million dollars, and then there's actually no improvements on his free throw shooting, jump shooting, uh, mid range shot. I mean, no improvement whatsoever. You know, at all. So, um, Cam Johnson. I mean, there's still things that he can actually bring to this game. <clears throat> Doesn't seem like he's actually really comfortable handling the ball, you know, like when they actually run him off the three-point line. I mean, this is stuff that he really truly needs to be working on right there. You know, you can't just be, okay, in the NBA, you can't just be a three-point shooter. That actually work in the regular season, but once they actually get into the playoffs, and you see what the, what the other teams are actually doing right now. They're just running Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets off the three-point line, you know, and then Cam Johnson... He doesn't really look really comfortable with the ball handling or anything like that, you know. So he'll rush a shot up, and um, you know. So um, I mean, and that, that I mean, this is the tough thing. This is why it's really kind of hard to build teams over here, man, because you just don't know who actually has the drive, the work ethic to actually really want to truly go out there and be great, man. You know, um, I guess you'll pay a, a Claxton based on potential. And then after that, you can, I mean, it's the same thing with Ben Simmons. I mean, he hasn't really showed any kind of improvements. I mean, the money he actually got was based off his potential, his future potential. And um, I mean, he made three all-star teams. And it's like, all right, so what else can you actually bring? Because like, the way, and I, like I said, I just say this because I'm not just picking on Nick Claxton. I'm saying the same thing about Ben Simmons. I mean, there's things they can actually do to marginalize him in the playoffs right there, man. You know, so um, you know, like I said, the co they they the scouting. There's so much <coughs> video out there. You know, they, they the way these guys can prep for you and scout for you, um, it's it's uh, you know, it's insane. You know, this is not like back in the days where you could just sneak up on people. You know, it's not that much. I mean, it's high depth, like 4K resolution <laughs> of, of of videos out there, man, where guys got nothing to do but to sit out there and just you know scout you out. I mean, you see in the actual drafts, you know, the pre pre game drafts, uh, like like the like player weaknesses, uh, strengths, and and you know, you'll look at let's say Nick Claxton's um, 
before he came out and before he got into the NBA, what he needs to work on. Jared Allen, Joe Harris, uh, you know, they they I mean they just they get your game down to the actual molecule. So um I don't know. I don't know. I mean I guess you paid Nick Claxton. I mean, he's really, really needed. I mean, they have so many dynamic guards in the NBA, and the fact that he can actually switch on to them and disrupt them and, and kind of affect their field goal percentage somewhat is a really, really huge, 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 huge plus right there. All right, so, uh, man, I've been rambling enough over here. How many minutes have we actually got to this thing, man? I don't even know. I'm pretty sure it's, it's a, <laughs> a long time, man. Y'all can only tolerate me for like three or four minutes, and they're like, yo, psh, man, I'm tired of hearing from you, Rashid. <laughs> All right, definitely like, comment, subscribe. Certainly share this video. And when you share the universe, certainly shares back with you. Peace.